back button in that location safe. And there's my computer fans running. All right. See, so we have a, we have the obvious projection, and we have a geo point, and that's the point on the map. All right, we have the map view object, and you can see that most of the stuff is exactly the same as the nose map activity, except we really only need one. All right, see so yeah, how we're querying for that intent, and then the intent that we're get that we're receiving from here when we call in our ad activity, that URI has the ID in it, so we don't have to worry about. Um, we really don't have to worry about is there multiple no because one note is unique to one ID and you see we grab the latitude and longitude here and convert to the appropriate map view points and then we set the new point being the point that we um, originally started with and we add a marker overlay I'll get to that in a minute is route displayed false now dispatch touch event this is interesting in the sense that we've customized our own map view. Uh, map view really wasn't intended for us to like select points, it was intended to view points. But we have, because we're extending the uh, map activity class, we have complete control of this. And this is a great demonstration of how if something doesn't suit your needs, change it so that it does suit your needs. That's what we're doing right here. Uh, MapView does not respond to any on clicks because that's already managed by MapView, and that's the so we have to override dispatch touch event. That happens when any when the map is touched. What we do is we clear all the previous overlays, and that there's only one overlay. We invalidate the map, meaning it refreshes. Now, if this action is an action up, then what it does is. It grabs the X and Y coordinates to where it's been, and then it divides by 1 times 10 to the 6th, and then it adds a new marker overlay at that exact point, and then it refreshes the map. And then we have to call super.dispatchTouch event, we have to pass that on to the super class, because if we don't, then we can't like move the map at all, like we can't um, pan the map, we can't zoom in or out. Because if we turn this to be true or false, then it'll only register touch events. It won't register like zooming the pinch to zoom in or anything. All right, now you can see in on destroy what we do right when you hit the back button is on destroy is called. Again, you can look at the um, official Android documents to see how that works. What we do is we grab content values and then update the uh, note that we were given. All right, marker overlay. This drops a marker whenever your finger is lifted. You can see we have a new marker overlay. It has to be at a certain geo point right here. Now this on draw method. You can see we have a canvas, a map view, a shadow, and then uh, integer when. So we're first we're gonna we might as well call the super class method first. Now point is what this get projection to pixels is. Is we grab the point. From the map view right here. Um, this doesn't have any Java doc to it, but essentially what it does is whenever you touch it, that's passed on to GeoPoint, and then that, and then we can convert that GeoPoint into just points. Uh, it'll convert those GeoPoints into pixels on the screen. What we do here is what this um, what this marker is is we're grabbing a resource. I I just found like a little. I, I took the marker from the uh, Google Maps application. I, I, uh, you, I'm sure you can find them. You can use a different marker. You can use a little Android icon marker. You can use um, a globe marker. It really, it doesn't matter what marker, as long as it's in the drawable folder. Now, here's the interesting part. And then we tell the canvas to draw the map at those X and Y coordinates. And you see we've kind of finagled it a bit by subtracting some points so that it fits evenly. Yeah, uh, let me show you what happens when we just set it right there. All right, let me just uh, run the, the application. Oh, not registering our emulator. I see. That's okay. We're gonna have to start a new one. So we'll close out of this.
give a minute for the simulator. I'll just give a minute for the simulator to uh, boot up here. All right, you can see the uh, emulator is finally booted up. All right, sample note. Change the location. Now, now taking note that this will take the exact x y coordinates of the pixel. You can see that that is. See, that's not at all where I'm clicking here. So what you're going to have to do is kind of um, fine tune it so that it falls in the exact point. This is just uh, this is just relative accuracy. It's not really accurate. So what you can do here is what I have done is you just kind of add values that it can do that. Like say if it's um if it's too much below, then you need to start then you need to um subtract. From the y, if it's a little too to the left or the right, you can kind of choose what that is and then uh, finagle it a bit. And make sure to always test this on a real phone. And you can see when I hit back on destroy, it should save that point. So that when I open the map, hey, look, that point's right there. Alright, one last thing I'm going to talk about here is how to grab the current location using GPS Wi-Fi network providers. See I've created a class here called My Location. I have a timer, a location manager, a custom class I called called Location Result, GPS enabled, and network enabled. Those are all booleans. See we create a location listener to listen for GPS and when it changes we cancel the timer and what the timer does is every um, whatever I have set here it'll refresh and try to get new um, coordinates what I do is I from the location result I call this got location and it kind of follows like an observer pattern where when the user creates a new location result class they would have to um, override the got location and then it would give them a location object so that th that that allows for when I am trying to grab a location it'll get the location when it's ready it's not forcing you to grab a location immediately we can do that using a last get last known location but it's not really forcing you to get the immediate location it's here's the location give me some time to work on getting the new one we also remove updates to any location manager because we already have the location. We remove updates also to the um, network listener. And then for the network listener, we do the same thing except for we change the to the GPS location. And really, we don't need to get any more updates if we already received the location. Here's what got location does. What it does is it sets that result to the location result. And if it is not null, it grabs the uh, location manager. Or I should say, if it equals null, then we should probably re instantiate it. What this does is, if this provider this is going to, is an try catch block, is it checks if the GPS provider is enabled, this checks if the network provider is enabled. If they're both not enabled, we're returning false, meaning that no, we don't have a location. If Now, if GPS is enabled, then we want to re request location updates from the GPS. If network and I should say if um, network is enabled, then we might as well get it from the network provider too. And then I'll get I'll later on in the uh, class I'll show you how we decide which one is more accurate. I'll get to that in just a minute. We create a new timer and we call this uh, get last location. It's a, a um, class here, and it's right there. And then we schedule that for. So there's no delay really. We return true. Um, you can probably add some delay if you're really conservative on battery life. Now, what this get last known location does is you can see it removes the um, updates from both the GPS and the uh, 
listen right here, and this is the main class that really does all the location finding and um, everything. And as you can see, if they're enabled, then we grab their um, location from the uh, location manager, get last known location. Alright, now here's where we decide which one to use. Um, if they're both not null, then what we do is, if the time, if um, the GPS location dot get time, if the time is greater than the network location, then we use the GPS location. And it indicates that it's uh, fresher, it's new. Um, if not, then we use a network location. If they're both not null, then we call the got location on both of them, and really at the end we call got location null because of these return statements here. All right, and we have this um abstract class called location result, and what it does is it simply grabs location. This course is brought to you in collaboration with Pablo Farias. It's also brought to you by Zenva. You can like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash zenvadev, Z-E-N-V-A-D-E-V. -E -E you can also follow us on Twitter at zenvatweets, Z-E-N-V-A-T-W-E-E-T-S. We also have great other courses on application and game development.